May God's peace be on all of you. Our today's lecture deals with fermentation media nutrients. Carbon sources. A carbon source is required for all biosynthesis, leading to reproduction, product formation, and cell maintenance. In most fermentations it also serves as the energy source. Carbon requirements may be determined from the biomass yield coefficient, an index of the efficiency of conversion of a substrate into cellular material. Various organisms may exhibit different yield coefficients for the same substrate, due primarily to the pathway by which the compound is metabolized. Differences can also be seen within an individual. For example, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, grown on glucose, had by a mass yield coefficients of 0.56 and 0.1 to gram per gram, under aerobic and anaerobic conditions, respectively. As most carbon substrates also serve as energy sources, the organism's efficiency of both adenosine triphosphate generation and its utilization are obviously additional key factors. Often, it is very useful, although rather difficult, to estimate how much ATP is required for growth. Carbohydrates are traditional carbon and energy sources for microbial fermentations, although other sources may be used, such as alcohols, alkanes and organic acids. Animal fats and plant oils may also be incorporated into some media, often as supplements to the main carbon source. Molasses, a byproduct of cane and beet sugar production, is a cheaper and more usual source of sucrose. This material is the residue remaining after most of the sucrose has been crystallized from the plant extract. It is a dark colored viscous syrup containing 50-60% carbohydrates, primarily sucrose, with 2% and nitrogenous substances, along with some vitamins and minerals. Overall composition varies depending upon the plant source, the location of the crop, the climatic conditions under which it was grown, and the factory where it was processed. The carbohydrate concentration may be reduced during storage, by contaminating microorganisms. A similar product, hydral molasses, can also be used. This byproduct of maize starch processing, primarily contains glucose. Malt. Aqueous extracts of malted barley can be concentrated to form syrups that are particularly useful carbon sources for the cultivation of filamentous fungi, yeasts, and actinomycetes. Some cereal crops, especially barley, are soaked in water for their sprouting, which ultimately result in the activation of enzymes. The grains are removed from the water, and they are dried for meshing. After meshing, they are soaked in warm water. These cereals crops contain starch, which is converted to maltose by enzymes. This solution containing maltose is called wort. To remove water from wort, vacuum drying or vaporization is performed to make it concentrated. This concentrated wort is known as malt. Malt extracts also contain some vitamins and approximately 5% nitrogenous substances, proteins, peptides, and amino acids. Sterilization of media containing malt extract must be carefully controlled to prevent overheating. Maillard reaction. The reaction takes place between amino group of amino acids with the carbonyl groups of reducing sugars, ketones, and aldehydes. Maillard reaction products are brown condensation products. Not only does this cause color change, but it also results in loss of fermentable materials, and some reaction products may inhibit microbial growth. Starch and dextrins. These polysaccharides are not as readily utilized as monosaccharides and disaccharides, but can be directly metabolized by amylase producing microorganisms particularly filamentous fungi. Their extracellular enzymes hydrolyze the substrate to a mixture of glucose, maltose, or maltotriose to produce a sugar spectrum, similar to that found in many malt extracts. Maize starch is most widely used, 
but it may also be obtained from other cereal and root crops. To allow use in a wider range of fermentations, the starch is usually converted into sugar syrup, containing mostly glucose. It is first gelatinized and then hydrolyzed by dilute acids, or amylolytic enzymes, often microbial glucoamylases, that operate at elevated temperatures. That's it for today's lecture. Don't forget to subscribe. And, we will see you guys next time.